turn in your words, Sister Billy, thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, turn in your Bibles to uh, John, the uh, second chapter. And as Carolyn said, we're going to uh, look at um, the Lord's first uh, miracle and all of the things um, around it. I'm certain that we won't have time to uh, cover it all, uh, but we, we will uh, prayerfully, by God's grace, um, get into the meat. So as I say, we're going to do this interactively. So if someone uh, would read, <coughs> excuse me, John chapter 2, uh, verse 1 through 11 for me, that would be great. And let us know what version you're reading in. All right, Brother Bill is going to be reading in the New King James. Amen. Again, Lord, we do thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for your son. Uh, we thank you for the author, uh, the Apostle John, and, and we ask you, Lord God, to again challenge us, um, move us, change us, and revive us, Lord, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Um, the book of John is uh, a book that uh, was written by who? John. Good. All right. Very good. And is this John the Baptist? John the Apostle. John the Apostle. Okay. Excellent. Um, John's purpose, he had a purpose in writing uh, the book. And, and we're going to see some of that uh, in these 11 verses tonight. And, and just before I... I um, I go uh, a little bit further. Um, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, I looked out and, and I was really, really concerned um, looking out to see who was here. Not that there wasn't looking for numbers or anything like that, but I didn't see the men. And I saw, you know, one or two, and now we have uh, more men that have joined us. And, and if we are really going to be revived in the body of Christ, we have to be um, like David. What did David do in order to be restored? What did he do? He confessed his sin. He did. He, he openly confessed his sin. We have to openly confess things that are wrong in our body. And, and it's not just manna. It, it's churches. But right now, we're in manna. 
And, and so one of the things that we need to be praying for, we need to put on our prayer list, is that our men will come forth in leadership in the body of Christ. Amen? John, what we will see in John is um, one of the, the, the apostles, one of the disciples uh, who wrote about Jesus and gave us a view that was different than the other uh, writers of the gospel, different than Matthew, different than Mark, different than Luke. And, and his purpose was what? Anybody know what John's purpose was in his writing? and what he was doing at that time. That's exactly right. Um, who wants to add on to that? that that's a good beginning. Pastor Ron. Okay. All right, that Jesus is the Son of God. All right? Um, in these verses... He begins to demonstrate that. So let me ask you a few questions. In verse 1, what do you notice um, interesting about what is said, what John has said in verse 1? The third day. Right. That's interesting. What's important about the third day? Okay, good. What else? Well, the resurrection was on the third day, but we're not talking about the resurrection here. Okay, so in, in this verse, in that particular verse, what else do you see that's kind of interesting? A wedding. A wedding is taking place, right. A wedding, okay. And where is this wedding? In Cana of Galilee. And, and who is there? The mother of Jesus. Is it interesting that they wouldn't just say, when you, when you talk about you know, somebody was at the fellowship, well, the mother of Alexis was at the fellowship. Is that how we talk today? What's your mother's name, Alexis? Lorraine. 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 You would say, I saw Lorraine at the wedding. But... John didn't use her name, right? He said the mother of Jesus. Okay, good. So in verse 2, what do you see? Bless you. What else do you, what do you see in verse 2? Jesus and the disciples were invited. Okay. So what's interesting about that? Yeah, what would Jesus be invited to the wedding for? and his disciples. So usually when you send out invitations to a wedding, you send them out how far in advance? A month? Okay. So in these days and times, they didn't do weddings the way we do weddings. Okay. Sister Mary. Very good observation. His mother was there, and because of his mother, Jesus and the disciples were probably invited, which means that they were probably friends of the people who were getting married. Okay, so Nazareth wasn't that far from Cana, and, you know, they probably, 
I don't want to say probably, maybe cousins or friends, but there was some relationship that was going on. So Jesus and his disciples were invited. So who were the disciples that were with Jesus? Does it say there? No, it doesn't. So how can we find out who was invited or who came with Jesus? Go back. Okay. Very good. Um, so let's go back to chapter 1 and look at, um, let's start. Uh, let's start at 35. Someone read 35 through 42 for us. to 42. Okay, so in those verses, we know who might have been with him. Andrew and, and Peter. Okay. That's Peter. That's Peter. Andrew and Peter. Okay. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. John who? So what do you think? He, right, he's probably there. He's seeing it going on. He's telling it. Right, very good. That's excellent. That's right. So the only other way that he could write this and not be there is the what? That somebody told him. Right. Okay. All right, so we got one, two, three so far. All right, somebody read 43 through um, 51 for us. Nathaniel. Amen. Good, good, good. Praise God. Good reading. So who else was there? Philip. 
and the sandy. All right. So, who else do you think might have been there with these guys? That's not mentioned, and so we have to sort of make an, an assumption. Huh? No, Matthew wasn't there. Yeah, another disciple. Yeah. James? And why James? The brother of Jesus or the brother of John? Of course, Jesus had a brother named James, too. But in this case, it was the brother of John. And they were sons of who? Hmm? Sons of, who was their father? Yes, Zebedee. Zebedee. Okay. So these were the disciples traveling with Jesus at the time, and there were six of them. So what's going on here in general in these verses? What? Describe the scene. Huh? They crashed the party. <laughs> I heard somebody say that. Well, no, it says that they were invited. <laughs> okay, he didn't have all 12. Carolyn? It did. It happened shortly after that. And, and we think that the third day, after, it was after um, meeting Nathaniel and, um, what's his name, Philip, that you know, there was about a three-day journey to get to Cana of Galilee. And so if you read the first chapter, there are several days that occur even before you get to uh, when he met uh, Philip and Nathaniel. But it was probably a three-day journey from uh, Nazareth over to Cana of Galilee, okay? Um, what, yes? Oh, right, I'm gonna ask it again. What, what's generally going on? You've got a wedding, you've got his mother there, what does it seem like his mother is doing? She's a proud mother trying to push him out there, but doesn't it seem like she's also involved in the wedding? She's helping out. Right. Yeah. Son, you know, they're out of wine. You, you need to do, help do something. Okay, and what does Jesus do? What is, how, well, how does he respond to that? Look at verse 4. How does he respond? He didn't want her to tell. Right. He said, woman. Was that? He said, woman. Was that disrespectful? Right. He said, woman, leave me alone. Right. I'm at the party. Okay. But he did. He said, woman. I think because he said it's not the time, because he didn't want them to know that he could perform the miracle at that time. Okay. I'm changing the water. Okay, that's good. That's warm. All right. So you think he didn't feel like his mom was giving out too much information? Well, she knew he was giving out too much information. Well, that's what I out too much information. Well, it wasn't that. Um, he called her woman. Where else did he call her woman? On the cross, okay? So this is a, in, in these times, 
This word here in the Greek is um, a, a sign of respect. It's almost like saying lady, you know, in a, in a very respectful way. Say it again. Today. Today, right. That's right. Woman, you can. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It ain't our nails, it's woman. Right. <laughs> right. That, something's up. In fact, quick story. My dad used to, uh, and he tells this story uh, not often, but regularly, and he just told it yesterday. Um, we played baseball when we were little. He was our coach. So one of the guys, you know, his mom would bring him to practice. So, you know, his mom said to, something to him, you know, as he was coming into practice, and he said, woman, leave me alone. My dad hauled off and hit him. <laughs> And we were sitting on the bench, we said, oh. But that was disrespectful. Okay? It really is a though. Sometimes when it's a woman, it means they still give you respect. They may not look good to the maid, but be quiet for the woman. It just means you know, uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's on the edge. Right. I know there's something up in there. Right. <laughs> Well, there was something up in there when Jesus said woman. He was respecting her. But the other thing that, what, did, what else do you think he was doing? Instead of calling her mom or mother. Okay, that's, that's good. That's warm. That's warm. I'm sorry? Come on, come on. As his authority as yes that's exactly right that's right he was creating that different relationship all right this is at the beginning of his ministry so for 30 years okay he he grew up and he was with mom and dad all right he grew up. and even during this time though he was sending them signals remember when they went to um, Passover and, and they left him. They thought he was sort of in the crowd, but he was up in the temple and he was preaching and talking with the, with, you know, the learned scholars. And, and he said to them, woman, don't you know I need to be about my father's business? So here he's grown up. He's now about to begin his public ministry at about 30 years old, and how long was his public ministry? How long was his? Three years. Three years. Okay. So here we see his mother asking him to do something, and he says to her what? It's not my time. And what was he saying then? You're on the right track when you were talking about this authority and everything. What, what, what do you think he was saying in, his, in the statement, it's not my time? It wasn't his time to reveal himself. Okay, that's in there. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. And it's also part of this change in relationship in, in, in realms. Okay, so he's moving from son to Lord. Now he's always been Lord but in terms of how he relates to his mother and his family, he wants to make it very clear that who is guiding what he does now? And who is that? God the Father. And it's not mom that's guiding what he does. So mom can't just run up to you and say, go get me a loaf of bread. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 
it's similar, yeah, right, because he, he did not want to, well, let me say it this way. In John, John's picture was to show us that he is the son of God. And, and so he had brothers and sisters, but that relationship had, the, the view of him had to change. Okay? All right. So she asked him, and he responded, uh, it's now not my time, but then she said to the waiters, do what he tells you to do. So she was submissive and not, you know, sort of pressing it, but she did suggest, okay, do something. And so what did he do? He told the, the waiters to fill the water bottles. Now these were big jugs. These were big um, containers holding 20 to 30 gallons of water, right, for the purification. So it was the, the practice of um, the Jews that before a meal, they would wash their hands and, and cleanse themselves. And, and so Jesus said, fill them up, and now dip it out and take it to the head waiter. And when, he, when they did, what did the head waiter say? Huh? Yeah, it was good wine. How many of y'all had some really good wine? Now, I don't see, I know. I know. Oh, you ain't never had a, Oh, you never had a good wine. Oh, no wine. Oh. Okay. All of y'all other everybody. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I started something. All right. But this this was not. Y'all may not be familiar with Thunderbird. And, okay. All right. But this was not cheap wine. All right. This was what? I don't know. What, what's some good wine? I don't know. It's, it was good wine, okay? It wasn't just. All right. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> So he turned the water not into ordinary, but to extraordinary, okay? And verse 11 says what? Somebody read verse 11 for us. Amen. Amen. So let's look at a few words here. Um, in verse 10, um, I'm sorry, in verse 11, it says, This beginning of his signs uh, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. Uh, some of you in your, in your versions, it might say miracles. Okay? So if you remember John's purpose, John's purpose was to show Jesus as Son of God. Okay? And so he recorded in his book seven signs. But Jesus did how many that were recorded? How many that were recorded? Anybody know? Take a guess. Take a wild guess. How many miracles? Huh? He said he couldn't even hold him in the book. Right, but there were some that there were the ones that were recorded. How many were recorded? Anybody? 35. But John only recorded seven. And, and he did that to, he used the word here, signs, which was different from miracles. Miracles is a word that says power to do or to perform. Here, this word means to distinguish, 
to show yourself different. And so everything that John wrote was to show Jesus in a different light. Okay? Um, the next word we want to look at is the word manifested. The word there, manifested, means what? To show. show. Right. To, to open up. To, uh, to demonstrate. All right? It looks like we're running out of time here. We got some, but we, we got some visitors coming up to join us. Some of our children. All right. So there are two words here that we need to really capture the meaning of. And the first one is glory. What does glory mean? Okay, that's good. It includes deity. Glory is the word doxa. And it means uh, an opinion or judgment. And what it says is that basically God's opinion of himself is true, excellent, includes his deity, includes everything. That's not how you spell deity. Is it D-I-E-T-Y? D-I, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. But it includes all of the good things about him, his character, his attributes, and it is his opinion. It is our opinion of him. And so when we say God's glory, what we're saying is we agree with what you say about yourself, God. Okay? We give you the glory. Our opinion is, is that you are great. We, we judge that you are awesome that you are magnificent, that you are wonderful. And so Jesus, in this first sign, wanted to manifest his glory, wanted to reveal, wanted to open up, to show his glory. And what was the result of it? They believed. They believed. The word believed and its derivatives show up over 90 times in the book of John. It is about believing. The question that I have for you, there are many questions. One of them is, what made the disciples believe? Carolyn? Yes. Well, they were there. They were witnessing. Yes, they were there. They were. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> uh, it is. It is an assumption that if you okay, let me go. Let me do it the right way. If you take it in context from chapter 1 where they are taken with him and they are following him, they are amazed with him, the things that he says, the things that John the Baptist said about him, you can gather from that that they are not going, if he's, at, if he's in a park, they are not going to leave him. They want to see him because in their minds, what did Nathaniel say about him? You are the son of God. Am I going to leave your side? Probably not. I want to, uh, Melissa? Right. Right. 
chances are they probably stayed together. I mean, when you go with a group, you don't, you probably hang out together, okay? So they saw the miracle. So what made them believe? Why did they believe? Huh? They saw it. Okay, they, they saw it. Right, excellent. But there's one other thing that made them believe. Well, you got to go back to chapter 1. Remember what we read in those verses? What did they say about him? Yes, sir. In the book of the law, Moses wrote about this man in the book of the law, and in fact, he is him. They testify that they believe that he is who Moses spoke of. So this miracle helped to do what? Solid, yeah, confirmed in their minds, in their hearts, that he is. Look what he, who, who could do that? Who could take water and change it into good wine? I mean, who could do that? Who could just change water into wine, period? He must. Huh? He didn't even have a It doesn't say that he did anything. Right. It, it does, he, didn't, he didn't speak. He didn't wave his hand. It didn't, John didn't report any of that. He just said, dip your pot and take it to the waiter. Yes. You must be. I believe you are the son of God. Next question. Do you, do we believe that he is the son of God? Everybody that believes he is the son of God, raise your hand. Okay, good. What did he ask the disciples to do because of their belief? Follow him. That's one of the things he asked. Follow him. Jesus and those are a couple of kind of really simple words. Follow me. Think about it. John and James are with their dad fishing, making money. That's how they made their living. A man walks by, follow me. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I got to think about No, they got up and followed him. That is radical. That is not usual. God played a part. Absolutely. Nobody gets up and just follows a stranger because he comes by and says, yo, follow me. It just doesn't happen unless God does a work in somebody's heart and mind. But it's still radical. It's radical. Jesus was not a regular man. He was radical. He did things to shake things up. When he asked them to follow me, they had to do what? Deny. Abandon. We don't have time to finish. Um, it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> but here, here's, here's what I, here's what, here's what we, here's what we need to, um, to consider. We all said we believe. And that comes with a, a price. 
And, and if we are going to be revived in manna, we have to consider these words. We have to make a radical change in our thinking, in our performance, in our acting, in everything that we do. We have to abandon. We have to abandon and deny ourselves. Now, in Luke, the ninth chapter and the 23rd verse says, if you are going to, and this is not an exact quote, but if you're going to be my disciple, you must deny yourself daily and take up your cross and follow me. So whatever, whatever you have in your mind about what you want to do, forget it. Pick up your cross and follow me. What is the vision you have in your mind when you pick up your cross and you follow Jesus? Huh? Okay, his will, yeah, but what else? Something? Struggle? Yeah. Huh? It's hard? Yes. Carolyn? Death. If you're picking up your cross, that cross is, you're taking that cross to be killed. That's what that's about. So no longer, what is, um, is it Galatians 2.20? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. Every day, every moment. We have to make a radical change if we are going to be revived. Those of you who do CPR, I don't know if you've ever actually done it. Have you ever actually, has anybody actually done it? What is that like? Is that like smooth, easy day at work kind of thing? That's a lot of work. Is it radical? It is radical. Because a person, you might have a slight pulse, and maybe you don't, but you are literally crushing their chest to get to the heart, breathing into their mouth air, and praying that they resuscitate. It is radical. We need to be radical. And it's not going to happen tonight. But it can. <laughs> okay? Why won't it happen tonight? Because you don't want to. You see, God is able. Those men were impacted by God. God is able to do it. But it doesn't happen because we don't surrender. It can happen. We can be different right now, immediately. But I think we, we don't want to. We don't, it, it's, it's scary to, comfort zone, it's scary. Think about the rich man. God said to the rich man, give up everything, sell everything, give it to the poor, and come follow me and have treasures in heaven. We don't want to give up whatever stuff we got. We're afraid to, to let go. We're afraid. We don't know, God, can I really trust you? I know I do. I, man. you, you can't, there's no way to get away. Yes, ma'am. Jonah in the way of, that's right, that's right. Yes, ma'am, Sister Mary. Amen. 
I'm going to read this and then we'll close out. This is a book uh, written by um, a pastor, David Platt, and he wrote it as he became the pastor of this really big church, and he was um, impacted in his uh, in his ministry because he had spent a lot of time in Asia and other uh, developing countries, and and it's called Radical, uh, Taking Back Your Faith from the American Dream. And, and in the first chapter, he, he breaks the chapters up. It's a very easy read. I recommend it. Uh, this portion is called, Is He Worth It? Uh, and it says, this brings us to the crucial question for every professing or potential follower of Jesus. Do we really believe he is worth abandoning everything. Do you really believe he is worth abandoning everything? Do you and I really believe that Jesus is so good, so satisfying, and so rewarding that we will leave all we have, all we own, and all we are in order to find our fullness in him. Do you and I believe him enough to obey him and to follow him wherever he leads, even when the crowds in our culture and maybe in our churches turn the other way? Is he worth it? Father, we, we are indeed grateful, Lord, for your your kindness, because certainly we are, um, we fall short, God, and, and so we ask you tonight to forgive us. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, in fact, for forgiveness, for your kindness towards us. We thank you, Lord God, for your patience, for understanding our weaknesses, our frailties, our failures. I remember a song, Lord, I forget the, uh, the singer, but the words were, Lord, please look beyond my faults and supply my needs. And certainly you do that, Lord, daily, time and time again. You are so merciful, uh, withholding from us that which we deserve and by your grace providing uh, everything that we need without the need to repay you, and, and so we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us tonight and uh, for uh, your word uh, through your author, John. And we pray, dear God, that um, tonight we would begin the change, that we would begin the, the radical change in our lives to uh, follow you. To understand what all of that means to follow you. Uh, that we would begin tonight, Lord God, to uh, open up those places where we hide from you and we won't allow you in to, to cleanse us, to clean us, to strengthen us. God, we pray for revival tonight. And Lord, maybe someone here needs to be resurrected. Someone here who is dead in their sins and uh, maybe something that was said tonight would impress upon them the need for Jesus. And so we take this time, Lord God, to uh, offer someone here the opportunity to uh, come as they are, that you don't have to change. You don't have to be anything other than who you are and what you are right now. And Jesus is standing with his arms open wide, ready to receive you. Is there someone here tonight who uh, wants a new start? Wants to have eternal life? Wants to understand what that even means? Is there someone here tonight? I remember when I got saved, 
couple of weeks, and actually it was a couple of days before I got saved, I was playing cards with a friend and he said he couldn't play cards with me anymore because he was rededicating his life to Christ and that he was praying for me and he prayed for me and I got saved. And just like that man praying for me, we we're all praying for you. If you're sitting there tonight and, and you don't know Jesus, he can make a difference in your life. And God, we do thank you tonight for your kindness and mercy towards us again. Thank you for this first night of revival. We pray, Lord God, that you will bless um, Pastor uh, Kane, Pastor uh, Shelton, and Pastor Benson as they uh, prepare, Lord God, to minister the word and uh, to lead us through this process of revival this week. And, and then, Lord God, we shall return on Friday and pray that you'll uh, close us out in, in um, fashion that will see us different uh, than we start this week. And so we give you glory. We agree with you, Lord, that you are great. You are awesome. And uh, we, we praise you. We exalt your son. We lift him up. And if we do, we know that he'll draw uh, men, women, boys, and girls unto himself. It's in his name that we do pray and ask it all. Amen.